let's draw a network diagram and understand how to identify the critical path so in this example we have been given some activities from A through J for each of the activities we have been given the completion time which is in days and we have also been given the predecessor for each of the activities so for activities A, B and C we need 2, 3 and 4 days respectively and these three activities are not dependent on any other activities similarly activity D has a duration of one day and it is dependent on activity A so activity A should be completed before activity D can start and next is activity E which has a duration of two days and is dependent on activity B activity F is dependent on activity B and has a duration of five days activity G needs seven days and is dependent on activity C activity H has a duration of two days and is dependent on activities D as well as activity E activity I has a duration of three days and is dependent on activities F and G activity J has a duration of one day and is dependent on activities H and I now based on this information let us first draw the network diagram now the first three activities that is A B and C do not require any predecessor that is no other activities need to be completed for these activities to get started therefore these become the starting activities of the project so let us start drawing the activities A B and C so we'll first draw a node which is the start node we'll number this as 1 and from this we'll start the three activities that is A B and C so we'll draw three arrows a B and C now A needs two days so we'll put the duration next to the activity name so we'll put two B needs three days and C needs four days now let's identify the activities which are dependent on activity A so we have D which is dependent on activity A and there is no other activity which is dependent on activity A so let's draw activity D so let's draw an event to mark the completion of activity A let's give this a number 2 and we'll draw the activity D from this node representing the dependence on activity A so this arrow represents activity D and activity D needs one day so we'll put one next to D so here we have completed activity D next let's find out which are the activities dependent on activity B so we have E F so activities E and F are dependent on the completion of activity B so let's draw the activities E and F so let's first draw an event which marks the completion of activity B and the starting of activity E and F let's give this a number 3 so from 
this event will draw two arrows one representing E and the other representing F now E has a duration of two days while F has a duration of five days so we'll put two next to E and five next to F so we have completed drawing E and F next let's find out which are the activities dependent on the activity C so here we have G which is dependent on activity C so let's draw activity G so first we'll draw an event marking the completion of activity C we'll number this as 4 and now from 4 we'll draw the activity G so this is activity G and it needs a duration of 7 days so we have completed drawing G now next is activity H which is dependent on activities D and E so D and E so let's draw the activity H now since H is dependent on both activities D and E we have to mark the completion of D and E with an event so we'll draw an event here and give this number 5 and then from this event we'll draw the activity H and this needs two days so we have completed H next is I which needs three days and is dependent on F and G so I is dependent on F and G so let's draw an event marking the completion of both F and G before I can start so we number this as 6 and we'll then draw I which needs 3 days so this marks the completion of I now next is J which needs one day and is dependent on both H and I so H and I so let's draw the completion node of H and I and then draw the activity J from that node let's number this as 7 and then we'll draw activity J which needs one day now since this is the last activity and no other activity is dependent on J we'll then draw the finish node and number this as 8 now another way of looking at this diagram is that say activity D is dependent on completion of A however activity D is not dependent on the completion of activity B so A can go on and D can go on once A is completed and at the same time B can be done in parallel while either A is being done or D is being done similarly there is no dependency between activities D and E so these two activities can be parallel activities similarly E and F can be parallel activities but H is dependent on the completion of D and E so while some activities can be done in parallel and other activities can be done in sequence only the set of sequential activities which takes the longest time is known as the critical path of the project generally this critical path of the project also denotes the duration of the project 
So let's understand this concept of critical path in easier terms. Let's say this is the start of the project. We have one activity, say A, which takes one hour. We have another activity, which is B, which takes two hours. We have another activity, which is C, which takes four hours. And this marks the completion of the project. Now, while A, B and C are happening, somebody may be doing activity D here, which takes, say, two hours. Another person may be doing an activity E here after completion of D, which takes three hours. Another activity which is happening in parallel could be say F, which is taking 3.5 hours. So all these activities can happen in parallel, but the starting and the end of the project is determined by the series of sequential activities which take the longest amount of time. So say this sequence takes 1 plus 2, 3 plus 4, 7 hours. And this sequence takes 2 plus 3, which is 5 hours. And this activity takes 3.5 hours. So out of these 3, 7 is the maximum. So we can afford to delay activities D and E. So we can have D start here and go on till till this point. Similarly, F can start at a later point and go on till this point. However, as long as the activities A, B and C are aligned tightly so as to complete in these seven hours, the project from an overall perspective would be on time. Hence, mostly the project managers focus on the critical path so that they can determine whether the project is going to be delayed or not. So let us understand in this example how to find out the critical path. Now, the critical path is defined as the longest duration path between the first and the last node of a project. While tracing a path from the first to the last node, one should always move along the direction of the arrows. So here are the arrows are moving from left to right. So we can also move from right to left if our arrows are moving from right to left. But in this case, since our arrows are moving from left to right, we have to determine our critical path by moving from left to right. The duration of the path, that is the critical path, is simply the sum of the duration of all the activities in that path. So let's figure out how many paths do we have and what are the durations in this given example. So the first path would be say A, D, H and J. So first is A, D, H to J. Now this has durations of 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1. So 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 which is equal to 6. This is in days. Now let's find out the second path. So earlier we went we went here A D H J. Now next let's see B and from 3 we have two paths. One is E and second is F. So let's take the first one which is E. So B, E, 
H and J. So second is B, E, H, J. Now this takes 3 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1. This is equal to 3 plus 2, 5 plus 2, 7 plus 1, 8. So 8 days. Now let's see if we have a third path. So earlier we were going from B to E, but we had another path which is B to F. So B, F, I and J. So B, F, I, J. And the duration says 3 plus 5 plus 3 plus 1. So 3 plus 5 plus 3 plus 1. So 3 plus 5 is 8, plus 3 is 11, plus 1 is 12. Now let's see if we have a fourth path. So we covered A and B. Now we also have another path which starts with C. So C, G, I and J. So this becomes our fourth path. C, G, I, J. So this is 4. C has a duration of 4 days. Plus G has a duration of 7 days. So 7 plus I has a duration of 3 days. So 3 plus J has a duration of one day, one. So four plus seven is 11, plus three is 14, plus one is 15. So at this point we have determined all the possible paths for moving from one to node number eight. Now let's compare the total durations of these paths. So we have 6, 8, 12 and 15. So definitely 15 is the longest duration. So this path is the longest duration path and therefore is known as the critical path. So let's denote this path by double arrows. So say this. here and here and here so this is the path that the project manager should keep a close eye on in order to ensure that the project doesn't get delayed 